Greetings, this is General of the Armies, Vincent Diaz Jr. This is a communique in reply to my one earlier today. Um, <coughs> I was a little afraid of uh, repeating the news due to my attempts to adhere to a uh, Nazi agenda. Um, I'm trying to do something a bit more like uh, sort of treating this case of how I keep calling judgment down and just letting facts fly like it's a public uh, trial change up to more like it's a private trial and I'm supposed to protect the data and it started with not repeating the news exactly like police are supplying those people who responded when they ask for anybody to fight with, with some sort of artillery to move that's needed. Or I'll keep getting it wrong on purpose uh, to the rest of the stuff spoken out. Uh, let me try to think of one. I shouldn't say it directly. I can probably just say it like I get to quip about it. Um, Yeah, I don't know. It's no fun in it yet. Yeah, it's, 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 it's false witness charges flying. It's hard to poke fun. Serious trauma. Anyway, uh, if you remember from the news, uh, uh, it said uh, pseudo republics are being put in place by Russia or something like that, a report of it, or the Ukraine is claiming that. Russia is starting republics or pseudo republics. That sounds good. I just want to know that it's the document I was ordering they be under for their constitution. There's really no debate about it. There's translations and um, verbosity, but there's really no debate about the only way to get it right with what constitutions require to be ethical is to have them be this. Um, but I was very happy see those signs of faith like my god boss I sort of heard him start getting called Vladimir Seven Stars or, or Vladimir Seven or Vlad Seven or Stalin Seven Seven trying to refer to a seven star rank as I refer to the seven star general I'm working with from Russia <sighs> wants me to believe in him wants me to believe what he tells me is true wants me to believe we will win he can win he just wants me to believe him when he tells me we're going to win and things are going to get better. And then in the place I have the Stockholm Syndrome, I'm almost helsinki um, Believe him when he tells me he's going to do things for me. Uh, and starts telling me to get prepared because they're supposed to happen. Uh, to, to believe they will really happen. Uh, because this is like a Stockholm and Helsinki situation. I am in one of the worst places where... Um, even someone of his rank working our systems perfectly with his records, like perfect records, when he tells me he guarantees these things, he's never failed them. Our enemies of our militaries are so fierce, and these, these enemies we're facing are so fierce. Uh, there's, there's just some things that are like impossible in the Stockholm Syndrome way, like I'm never going to get saved from this place. The way they've totally Stockholm proven, or almost... Well, the last, the last time I was really working over was I was stuck in the jail illegally, and it's like, there's no way anything's ever going to stop this from going down any way but the way they want. It's about the way it went. We really need this to stop. Um, I totally believe in him, but he has failed me in many places. I can't say I didn't expect him to succeed at all, like he wouldn't show me any of the signs of success I wanted. Well, he would still work on the faith, like I'm just trying to call in another sign of faith, like this is getting bigger and better. It's something I'd expect of someone with the control Vladimir Putin has over these things, as opposed to him, with him sort of being shut out from our history and past, having to work these positions. Uh, he's starting to work me over about how this is the war to end it, this is the war to win it, the war itself was a sign of faith I was calling for. If he could get the stuff together to start this war. I didn't believe him the war would start. 
when he told me upon one of these failures of his guarantees to save me from the hostage taking in the jail facility, he was going to have to start a war. And he had been talking about some of his absolutes and guarantees and like every time they do this to him, he does this to them and we win and they lose stuff. Um, I totally believe him on. Uh, so he told me he filed to start the war. He told me there was going to be this war before it started. It was in regards to what was going on between the two of us for uh, the filing finally push things into action. And then there's just uh, his other guarantees. Like he just won't lose for so long, so many battles, he won't let people hurt him so bad before he'll break and stop them and get the win. Even if it means some sort of total God of War like break where he has to uh, engage in some sort of combat that hurts him horrendously so he doesn't even really have the will to do it without breaking to uh, get out there and with physical force stop these things that are causing these problems. Well, uh, McDonald's is closed in Russia. I was glad to see McDonald's are just these uh, capture pits now. I'm trying to totally avoid them, but things are so bad in the pandemic and so monopolistic in so many traumatic ways that we were, we were supposed to have banned over the problem of these ways and all the things that are like it. Um, I almost have no choice but to have to go to McDonald's every so often. Especially without a, without a choice to cook. Uh, there's um, been these phases where McDonald's is only employing a certain type of person and I wanted to explain them by a genetic code, like their um, inbreeding markers. They usually mark them up like they're not even allowed to be in the workforce. They're all in the non-Americans. Uh, I've seen a fully automated McDonald's having been raided uh, by the enemies who showed up just to wreck up the automation and ruin the products being served by automation. I didn't see it running fully automated, but I saw it running in a state where the, uh, the uh, war force that was doing this trauma was just standing still and everything was functional without them doing anything at it. Like, they were just sort of standing at the ends of the places, maybe on, on guard so nobody could get back there. Um, most of our McDonald's, now that we're in the pandemic, look like there's a bunker room where the food cooking is going on uh, with, like, a place where it looks like they've blasted all hole or they managed to put some sort of hole maybe chunking out a chunk doesn't count as destroying a wall or something to get through oh all right right it looks like the um there, there's like the counter or the shelf where the finished orders go so you can pick them up and it looks like it uh, attaches to the wall or it might run through the wall with the wall solid around it and the uh it looks like the food passes through in a in a particulate stream and then forms up into something solid on the other side and it takes the standard cooking equipment to um, get the particles in order but the standard cooking equipment just stays in like a uh, still state maybe having to be a temperature now our mcdonald's are just traps like um, the worst sort of apartheid nightmare soldiers have moved in on it it's almost not fair to call them a military. It's more like a species problem, it's almost clear. Uh, well, uh, we've got our right to have seating at them back, and it's come with them kicking everyone out of the restaurant in a time so short with policies so inappropriately written up. Um, anyone that gets up against their time limit, which is, which is sometimes as low as 15 minutes, which is not even long enough to get an order to you maybe just long enough for them to take your money and send you away before you get it um, anyone that goes through any of this suffers such a need for recompense and restitution from McDonald's because the way this is going down systematically that uh, they are due more than McDonald's can ever pay them for just one instance of this apartheid torture to uh, famine trying to murder us all for the joy of it for them uh, 
by way of their class beliefs that uh, there's something special it gets to and we're something that has to deal with it and doesn't get to stop it. There have been some signs of McDonald's being sliding down the wrong way of the slippery slope. Um, ever since they brought out the one, two, three dollar value menu here in the USA, they broke all these international treaties, rules, and laws about the apartheid and the uh, famine they'll cause. Um, they tried to call it the one, two, three dollar value menu like it was going to be a new sale or something that was going to stick around. It's going to be like a way to save money. They tried to call it, uh, whereas they raised everything, its price on the menu around this movement, and uh, started to categorize everything around it being a dollar, two, or three for their menu, uh, thereby pushing everything up so there's basically nothing under a dollar, and there's, bar and there's barely anything at a dollar. And then uh, there were some deals going on we did get back, uh, but... Uh, we used to have a dollar menu, uh, and the uh, inflation that has taken place to sort of call things the same, so of saying prices should be lower now, which is what it is by standard economics, uh, shows that uh, our dollar menu items, by the time you have the one, two, three dollar value menu, should be dollars again. Or this shouldn't be an excuse to rip away our deals for like our three or two for two fifty, and then start charging two seventy five for one of those. Maybe slapping some bacon on it, calling it three or five, or just knocking it off the menu with some bacon. And barely having options for it on the menu anymore. All right, and then I have this one. This one should be good of the communist fame. Um, as of the past two days, I've started to try to start to review my knowledge of Marxism. I've um, started to be queued up by uh, orders from Vladimir Putin making it through my communications chain back to me. To uh, He wanted me to review my uh, faked out school experience of them teaching me communism. He was able to review some of my data and it turns out I got Marxism because they wouldn't teach us communism. Um, because of their wars but they sort of taught me communism by way of Marxism and I'm going to have to review my uh, memories on it I think it might have taken more than a day oh yeah so um, I believe we started measuring this and used to have this in popular media uh, when the soda fountain first came out and um, certain vendors were selling cups with free refills with time limits or without time limits like uh, uh, getting it till close was a non-time limited option um, but maybe some of them only wanted you to get one which was like a fair way for it to run so that's sort of how they were doing it with them uh, controlled outside of the self-serve uh, but some other people were sort of like giving you all you can drink for an hour or two hours and things were becoming ludicrous. Now remember, there's a lot of debate and legislature around that, though I don't have the full terms up. So I'd usually just walk in there and sort of mourn and try to take solace and cry to myself and wonder how I'm ever going to meet these needs again. With um, There's basically no soda fountains left that operate according to the rules. And McDonald's is the biggest problem. McDonald's is the only place that's set up to have these things everywhere they're needed or somewhat close to it. Except, as it used to be, almost all McDonald's have them. Now, may, now nearly no McDonald's have them or have them in uh, public access range. And then there's this issue about how much time you get in McDonald's per visit. And uh, I'm going to try to cut this one short. I know I've already made a long one today. Um with their time limits like 15 minutes 30 minutes and then they're trying to sort of say it's loitering when it's not loitering they're just a bunch of uh, babbling apartheid soldiers clipping together signs and stuff because they know they can put up a sign and then just murder everybody over it or something I'm sorry I'm breaking down and I'm watching the Nazi agenda talk um, the rules actually read is the way they're sort of interpreting them like I'm supposed to sort of interpret it out to uh, some sort of 
tribal Babel language with the Taliban and the apartheid uh, work, translate it back to the noises or uh, characters of the English language they use uh, and explain what they are explaining it as and then tell uh, yeah and then and then, and then try to use the appropriate language so you know it just basically gives people a limit to how long their visit can be maybe this is chain by chain or I mean restaurant by restaurant because the restaurants have different rules but each one of these limits is like it's a whole lifetime's worth of a limit so if you want to, I mean to try to put this in perspective if you've uh, been responsible for closing McDonald's I want to thank you over and you don't know how bad it's gone like maybe you knew they were kicking people out on a time basis the way they have their rules written that are illegal and they're misinterpreting in ways that aren't actually the language the words don't actually mean what they're doing on their signs that are their policies uh, they're 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 actually just flipping out over uh, like like it's just another set of their babel commands um, that, that don't actually work that way but they don't give a damn because they just they just call their apartheid police that are just, you know, the people who come and uh, side with them because they're the same species and then get the other guys, or get whoever they're pointing at, barking at, whatever. Um, you know, it just basically gives you a lifetime's worth of a time limit there with the vagary once the whole overall message, which was supposed to be a loitering message, turns into a uh, visit limit message. Uh, let's see if you can help me with anything. I'm, I'm begging for 24-hour Starbucks back. Starbucks is the only place you can go and sit a long sit. Um, like McDonald's has gone this way to the maximum, the limit of visit. All businesses are um, limiting business and cutting visits short. Uh, it's, it's just this apartheid murder uh, by famine and stuff. Like you know, If you thought you were going to be able to sit around a business... To not have to face time outside. It's almost like these people can read your mind and know that's what's going on. And they kick you out or they stop serving you. Not in the way they just let you sit there. The way they make you leave. They refute to serve you. They serve you so poorly you, barely ha you basically have no choice but to leave. They, they just decide your time being a customer there for a visit is over with. And get you to leave. Yeah, and they have the apartheid police they'll call will show up and just be the worst next next worst yet criminal who shows up with the, all the weapons on it can possibly carry and that sort of stuff that'll just uh, like I'm talking about that sign babble out some stuff like they'll babble out some rules that don't mean the way they're trying to apply them and then just go ahead and use that stuff as a weaponized way take slaves and torture and stuff well, uh, lastly, I guess I want to say in these in these past days, like a um, uh, God, God boss, um, the seven star general from Russia, I'm working with, is he wanted me to report on the way I'm measuring my signs of faith, like the way I, I see changes in all of humanity. Like we had this big one where he's sort of talking to me about sort of like genetics and evolutions, uh, but less than that, like. Um, uh, generations coming up and the way what the fastest generation is and can be and what can count as a whole generation changing where you think it might take uh, multiple generations or new generations and it can happen within an ongoing or ongoing generations and uh, I've seen just this rapid progress with the degeneration of the species I don't even like to call them the species anymore I'm still using standard species terms just this rapid degeneration with the pandemic like uh, we got this genetic altering medicine started and here we are two to three years later and I think I'm about to call out about 10 evolutionary leaps we don't really want to call evolutionary we sort of want to call changes in generations of a species by way of their expression or um, storage of genetics um, so let's see trying to remember what the first big one was uh, well the way I was experiencing this without being able to articulate it as much as I want uh, and I sort of thought it might be a problem with myself somehow as I have most of us trained to in our individualistic society um, was I was seeing less and less humanity in my life to the point 
I basically couldn't find humanity over what I was seeking it for um, from any type of human anywhere in any way. Let's see, along with this, like this sort of expressed itself more like uh, the situation isn't so dangerous without humanity, then it seemed like people stopped having a conscious and a will and like a state of an ethical life form in their mind and body that can control them and try to bring them to their senses over their ethics. I think next, it sort of mixes up like we're getting around the pandemic starts and uh, the genetic altering stuff might be out there. And, uh, well, for a while there, it seemed like everyone was angry. It seemed like everyone was angry. And then it looked like everyone was m manic. I was checking for everyone to be hurt. I thought everyone was going to be hurt, like everyone would have some bit of COVID, like they said COVID hurts you forever. I thought everyone, well, was something that would hurt everyone forever. Everyone was going to be walking around hurt, and I thought that's my might be what I was seeing with everyone sort of looking angry. Like like with their genetics having changed, or sort of like the COVID lives in them forever, but where their genetics change, who knows? So now at this point, uh, my situation changed more, like I had to start living outdoors. So my measures are a bit different than the average person. Uh, but I started getting measures, you know, just living outdoors here in DC and trying to live around the places making it easy for me, which barely any of were left running right. Um, I was able to get a humongous sample size for my surveys and such, just sort of looking people over and taking my measures through nonverbal communications and just whatever is out there that's easy. It doesn't have to be constant work stream, it's just sort of paying attention. And it appeared that the genetic changes were starting to bring about genetics that have been outlawed and possibly even smited out of existence by genocide by the by the justice code um, by some sort of like retro rolling DNA virus like behavior something like 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 people were sort of devolving in a way that wasn't exactly evolving it's was, it was gonna lead to this evolution where there's nothing good left of them uh, so so it's it's like I wonder how long this has been because I know this hasn't been forever um, I started noticing uh, So many people from the population were Thinking about stealing from me And all I had was what was with me because I was out of outdoors on this war sort of duty in this war sort of war torn nation and it's like they wanted to steal from me in the worst way to make things the worst for me they possibly could, like take my only pair of shoes while it's taking my break out of them. Uh, in a place, it's going to be really, really hard for me to get more shoes. Well, I also started to notice having to sort of rely on what is like the kindness of strangers. Well, it's really not. It's just like society obeying the law. I was going to have to like rely on being able to leave something somewhere and not guard it and get back to it. And uh, it was usually working out no matter what I left, where, almost no matter how long. Like, I was, I was wondering some days if it was like what they were training me in the military. Like, that thing has to be in arm's, rate, arm's length, and maybe if you're not looking at it, being touched and stuff to be safe. You know, not, not, not like something you left there and came back to. Um, anything I left was stolen, at least not there when I got back. Almost everywhere, almost everything I can ever have will be stolen from me if I'm not constantly guarding it. So while this was going on, like I'm remembering before I was all the way outdoors, um, the language had started to change and the music was changing. The music is one of those fast things. Like, they, like, like there, there are sort of evolutions in music that, that can happen kind of fast. I think we sort of had one of those. There might be one of those to show up. The language has sort of changed. And I think one of the things I was measuring up was it's like people were making this terrible music that no one should want to listen to. It seems like no one really wants to listen to or like. That They were just using the language, like they were saying things that people don't get to say, people want to say. So people wanted to have it said by using the music. And that, that was just one of the places I thought I might have an artistic measure on it instead of just wanting to call it some sort of de-evolution of them. So at this point, the language is changing. 
Um, but I haven't become fully aware that I'm not even capable of carrying on conversational English with anyone anymore, even though I know I'm not the problem. Um, but as I look back, it looks like already at this point, no one can natively speak English and there are no longer any conversational English speakers. One of the early markers, I don't know if I've marked up, but I'm sort of talking about people losing their mind around um, leading lives of crime and thinking it's okay, or just this movement where it was, it's, it's the end of this whole debate, are humans innately bad? Yes. And it's the worst case now. Like, they're the bad guys always. The worst sort of bad guys. The way they have their numbers, it's always the case. Now, um, I think one of the earliest and most popular things people have done with these uh, genetic engineering tools, they got control of probably through the black market with just some sort of illegal pill to take every night or something to figure stuff out with. I don't know, there's some stuff I've heard was uh, getting bigger. I, I finally grew up, like I've been working on growing up a long time, and I didn't take any special alterations or do any genetic stuff besides, you know, like just, just standard exercises and stuff. Um, I've grown up to so big, no one should be as big as me, but most of the species has grown up so big or for a while there I thought the enemy was just surrounding me with people bigger so there was always this threat there would be people bigger than me around but, I mean I've grown up to six and a half to seven feet tall six foot two six foot five every time I grow up society grows up around me or at least the people around me keep getting big enough to be a threat and at first it was the males like there weren't that many females it was the most male looking females like all the males they needed around to be about the standard threat like I was as tall as there was going to be around but there's just like the standard threat the species has to make like I'm average height and there's all these bigger people around me it kept popping up in my daily counts um, well it's become clear they've done some sort of freakish genetic freak out uh, to be so big and it's it's perfectly clear with how many people are so big now and what the averages must be um, this genetic engineering has taken place so, um, that was one of the earlier ones. It was at these later, at this later point, like, I've sort of noticed it's impossible to speak to people now. Like, they don't know language, even though they might still be making the noises. I started working on these terms with myself, like, they're running on automation. Or automation is running them. I think it's best for my attempting to obey the Nazi agenda. I don't get to hammer out all these points like I might have 10 that make a big point. I'm sort of breaking down and forgetting. Let's see, I was at, my, at that last one. I think I have one more from there. Um, so there's a lot of talk. Like, I, yet again, I'm blurring them together instead of giving specifics. Like, I might actually just start getting out DNA code and uh, showing its outlawed nature, demanding it be destroyed from existence. Um, this big one is... Um, People are running on automation, it's clear. We've been able to see people run on automation like it's um, a natural fact of life and maybe even good for them or a nice way to cope. And it can be a great thing and it doesn't really require much but, but the effort to do it. But no, no. This has started to turn out like the way these people sort of have language abilities and can seem to function while they can barely speak. And there's all these other problems. I haven't gotten through all of them. Uh, something like it's been, the food's been poisonous or it's been so hard to eat. There's, there's a lot of stuff about how it seems like people aren't living lives to survive. Um, they, they, they're running on some sort of automation. Like I've, I've run through this, like I'll sort of call it like a video game with them. Um, but at this point, after what has happened with I and Vlad Seven Star, or, you know, that's the god boss, the Seven Star General of Russia I'm working with, we can't really call them anything except. Um, weapons or an automated weapon ammunition of an automated weapon this word he's teaching me that doesn't fully count as a defined word the weaponness and they are endlessly displaying the perfection the prowess of certain types of automation weapons by their use of being said weaponous weapons of automation like some of these are simple and always prevalent and used to sort of happen a bit, but not always. Like, uh, there's just always some of them around. And then it moves through the, the, these grades. 
where it's like they're always making noise. You can never have peace, and if you're having peace, they'll notice and make noise. Uh, to the point where you notice things are being paid attention to, like you're going to have a moment of joy, and they're going to do something to stop you from having it. Or you're going to get into having the joy, and they're going to notice you're having joy, and they're going to stop you from having joy. Um, so they, 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 they've been manic, and they've seemed happy. It's been really bad. They've seemed really happy through this pandemic. Like, the pandemic hit, and everybody got as happy as I've ever seen them seemingly manically and finally it's broken like the mania had broken I'd seen the mania had broken but it hadn't broken right like they were supposed to um, go through some phases and stages and we couldn't really get them to go through them but here we are like I was mentioning <laughs> Vladimir Putin looked happy in some of the pictures uh, these were on his Twitter page the so war seems to be going decent uh, the other side doesn't look so happy. Like the other side's faces don't look like such pleasant faces. Well, they also don't look so terrifyingly threatening, which is good. Uh, the people around here seem to have finally broken from their mania and these other stages, like maybe just so, sort of showing some guilt. Um, t t maybe they believe justice can occur again. I think they see the end. And so I've been trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, God, boss, Seven Star, Russia. General has been doing his best and gotten things through to me. He's promised me even some dreams. It's decent. I sort of wish I had better proof and evidence, but it's fair enough to count as to say I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel, this problem with the species we're having. And I think they may be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, too. All right, I think I'm about ready to sign off. I think I have one more thing going through my mind. Yeah, the last thing going through my mind is sort of like this Matrix talk. Don't know if this popular culture is quite upright for me trying to adhere to not only the Nazi standard but the communist standard to get playtime in Russia. Um, where at the end of that movie, Smith is having a talk with Neo. Uh, like Neo is a human and Smith is a computer program that, about how the humans are the species that have to be smited out, that are always ruining everything and can never have joyride and stuff. And um, he calls it the height of their civilization. I, I didn't used to believe it, but now that I've gotten this story straight, because I thought this thing was sort of straight up just trying to call out what was going on around it in, like, popular media terms of a movie taking place outside of reality in modern times style. Um, and I know the, 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 there's these product rollout cycles for things like the smartphones and the tablets, and we've had the Internet age and... Uh, wireless internet with cellular phones really be one of the major big things to come out since then without anything else advancing very far like our smartphones are about the supercomputers that are just great at everything we need them for in so many ways it's sort of fair to say we used to have on our desktops and the only thing they might have out there was like the old calculator of a blueberry to do some of that stuff it's like that's when this was just starting and most of it had been figured out for a long jaunt into the future like we've gone now uh, but just looking around and looking at this technology like I'm talking about stuff slated to be places like 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 the computing power slated to go up quadruple every time it goes up and stuff like that that's not happening maybe maybe like shrink half size and stuff like those have gone off task and f finally for these last phases like humanity has lost it not been humanity anymore it's just been the removal of features or the, the breakdown of the software um design against ease of use the interdiction of human intervention points that allow forced human errors in places automation had been perfect seemingly as far as something that's really so far out of line you'd expect punishment every time of the top brutal nature like breaking an auto mailer or breaking the auto mailer policies so somebody gets to do that job manually and it's almost something so ludicrous I've heard of going on I just don't think it's happening enough to complain like the auto mailer thing seemed to be going on a lot I heard some people decided they were gonna ring the phone like they would break the bell on a phone to ring a bell at you when it was phone ringing time, you know, it's, it's just become this ludicrous. So, the last thing I'm pointing at, 
I hope I see some good news soon. Uh, is this automation breaking and sort of Ludditism? It's just going backwards in technology. And then it's like these certain crimes they've gone with, with like the, the monopoly. And I forget that. Maybe you don't remember these words. I'm sort of out of my English enough. These are probably English. There's monopoly and the other thing. They're usually teaching us those things together. And they're just doing it all, all the way across the board. Like it's a good way to run things, to have apartheid of a Holocaust where they're always attempting famine and slaughter and such with basically all of our product offerings stunted and disabled in so many ways there's some basics to it like there's just no way to rely on only one of those products to do as much as it used to do with the monopolistic like logic working out here that it usually winds up something like there is only one really specific way to get things done left and then with all these worst signs of it's hard to even call war of them. Um, now that they're dragging us through medieval processes again, like everything's almost broken down to paper and pencil, except it's almost impossible to keep up a smartphone without everything in line. They've tried to steal from us out, away from our homes. It takes to run them. They've made it. You have to use a smartphone almost everywhere. They're running trapping and slaughter systems so that even though it sort of was the pandemic they've been blaming with the pandemic ethic of quarantine and keeping people home and stopping or at least heavily limiting human contact it's been made so that the harshest hardest and most trips from the home possible are being forced to be made with all the possible human contact that can be made being made including even new human contact with all automation being broke down that can possibly be broken down and with it being broken down so far there's basically only one way to get things done or one choice for certain choices like the only way you're going to get the type of fries you need where you used to have five choices in town is one mcdonald's store or something um, everyone knows where you're going if you're doing certain like agenda things to get them done like there's only one place to go and there's only one way to do it and they just made it so easy for them to be so evil and achieve such suffering and have a holocaust so grand.